What's up y'all, today we're gonna show you how to make awesome coffee using a French press and it's really easy, so let's get to it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is preheat your brewing vessel with some hot water. You don't need to fill it all the way up, just a quarter of the way full is fine. Put the lid on there, give it a swirl to get everything warm. Once it's warm, you can use that same water to preheat whatever mug you're going to drink out of. Now we can go ahead and add our ground coffee. Now, a lot of people suggest using a really coarse grind with the French press in order to help minimize sediment. Unfortunately, this doesn't lead to the best flavors, so we're gonna use kind of a medium grind, something really similar to what we'd use for our filter coffee. Now I'm just gonna make one cup for myself, so I'm gonna use 20 grams of coffee to 300 grams of water, and this is a one to 15 ratio. Now within that one to 15, to one to 17 brew ratio window we talk about. Immersion brews like this are gonna favor a heavier brew, so one to 15 is gonna be perfect. But as always, use what tastes best to you. Bring your water to a boil, kill the heat, and wait just a second until the water starts to settle a bit and you don't hear those rumbling sounds anymore. Start a timer and get your water in there. Now we're gonna add all the water at once, and we're gonna pour pretty aggressively because we wanna make sure that we're saturating the entire coffee bed. So move the kettle around as necessary to cover the whole bed. Sometimes I'll even spin my French press as I'm pouring the water in to make sure I get really even coverage. Now once all your water's in, you can put the lid on the French press to trap some of the heat in, but don't press the plunger down. We don't wanna disturb the crust that's forming at the top of the coffee. After four minutes, we're gonna remove the lid and gently stir the crust at the top of the brew. Now we don't wanna stir it too aggressively because we don't wanna over agitate it. I'll generally do three stirs, but however you do it, do it the same way every time. Now you'll be left with this little tiny cream or froth on top. So you wanna take two spoons, just scoop that off the top and discard it. Now here's where things get really interesting. After you break that crust, most of the grounds that are contributing to extraction are at the bottom of the French press. Once they're at the bottom of the French press, extraction rate really slows down. So this doesn't over extract as quickly as you might think. Think about it like you'd think about cupping coffee. You might cut the same table for over 20 minutes and the coffees don't over extract, they just generally get sweeter and sweeter as they cool. Same principle applies here. So when you decant your brew, really just depends on how much sediment you want in your cup. The longer you wait before decanting, the more of these teeny tiny particles that are suspended in the brew are gonna settle to the bottom of the press. So the longer you wait to decant, the less sediment you'll have in your final cup. If you like a lot of sediment because it adds to the weight of the coffee and you love that experience, you can decant your coffee one minute after you break the crust. If you prefer a cleaner, sediment-free cup and you like the delicate qualities that that has, you might wait five or six minutes before decanting the brew. And remember, it's not gonna over-extract. And don't let anybody tell you that one way is right or one way is wrong. One of the biggest ideas behind this series is to help you make the coffee that's best for you. So when we're getting ready to decant this, throw the lid on the press, but don't press the plunger down. Pressing the plunger down is just gonna agitate all those grounds at the bottom of the French press, and we don't wanna disturb those. So we're gonna set the lid on it and just use the plunger for a strainer. And when you pour out of your French press, you wanna pour really delicately. Again, to not disturb that big mass of grounds at the bottom. French press is great because it's really easy to scale. Whether you're using the biggest one or the smallest one or making a small brew in a big French press, you don't need to change the brew time. You don't need to change the technique. All you need to do is use more coffee and more water. And that's it, y'all. This is French press coffee. Let me know how it works for you. Stay dialed and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.